So that's kind of the framework that we operate under, which kind of sets us apart from most other unions. Um, but basically, it kind of goes back to the idea that when we approach uh, the labor issue, we think of it in terms of a contest of power. It's not about uh, you know staying on message or winning a media campaign, but it boils down to power on the work, you know, at, on, at the job and uh, on the. Uh, at, at the shop floor, you know, so that's pretty much what we're about. One of our slogans is direct action gets the goods. So that's just the whole notion that if you really want to get something at, at, at your workplace, then you got to come together and take action, whether that means slowing things down, uh, what we call work to rule, which is where we follow every policy and procedural uh, rule so that it just brings production to a halt. Uh, or you know whether you have to withdraw uh, your labor altogether and go on strike, but those are the kinds of tools, not third parties, not outside, like looking to the politicians or, or labor lawyers uh, for solutions, but finding the solutions um, amongst yourselves as workers on the job. So that's pretty much what we're about, and we're tabling as well. We got literature and stuff to check out after. Uh, my name is Rafa. And uh, a few of us here are involved with the Los Angeles Anarchist Book Fair Collective, including Sarah. So we have the, the next book fair coming up. Uh, we're still working on location, date, what have you, but we hope that everyone kind of keeps their, their finger on the pulse. I think we'll have information on DIY zine, so you guys can check up on that. And uh, if anyone wants to like help out, volunteer. In terms of what we're trying to do with, with the book fair, I think it's important all of us here probably been inspired at one point by the written word. I mean, inspiration comes in many forms. Um, but I think in that respect, it's important to just expand on certain principles, whether we're familiar with what anarchism is or not. I think we all exercise those tendencies. Maybe we don't recognize it as anarchistic tendencies per se, but if we construct a sphere of sentiments, you know, whether that's family, whether that's friends, community, it's just that, that same principle, just trying to expand on that. So I don't know, for me personally, that's a challenge that I encounter even within my family, just constantly trying to disambiguate the term and then reclaim what it means and try to wrest it back from obviously all the propaganda that's out there you know, that makes it synonymous with all these ridiculous things that it's really not rooted in. Um, yeah, and I think there's a, a perfect example of that, you know, us coming together, you know, operating on the basis of mutual aid, solidarity, cooperation, what have you. And yeah, we hope to see everyone you know, at the book fair, and hopefully, if anyone wants to help out in any way, uh, just contact us through DIYZ. We'll have all the information as it comes. I know there was not really cool mingling at the beginning. I appreciate that, like, when there's even, there will be some more of that later. Um, she'll give a quick presentation about her book, um, go into depth through uh, Q&A, and then, uh, the bathrooms, let me just announce her down that way, and uh, we should start. So, Maya, thanks for coming. Yeah. Cool.
and make this happen. And um, yeah, I'll just launch right in. So my name is Maya Ramnath. I am also part of the board of the Institute for Anarchist Studies. I live in New York right now, but I've lived in California for quite a while too. I'm involved in various activist projects in New York, including something called South Asia Solidarity Initiative, Adela New York, which does boycott investment sanctions work, um, New York Anarchist Book Fair, and a global justice working group that's affiliated with Occupy Wall Street, and I teach history. So I wrote this book as part of the, um, the uh, Institute for Anarchist Studies and AK Press Anarchist Intervention Series. And the intervention I'm really trying to make with this book is, is twofold. So it kind of relates to the two halves of the title, Decoloni Decolonizing Anarchism and then an Anti-Authoritarian History of India's Liberation Struggle. And also to the two ways of interpreting that phrase, decolonizing anarchism itself. So in one sense, it suggests to me how do we think about using anarchism itself as a force for decolonization? And on the other hand, at the same time, how do we decolonize our own uh, practice as identifying with anarchism? And I should note that this project, I started work on this project and thinking about the, this phrase and these ideas a long time ago before the term in the past months, I feel like the term decolonize has become very, very publicly prominent first as a critique of, of the, the way that of the Occupy movement uses kind of language and ideas, and now subject to criticize criticism itself as just being like, and I've seen criticism of like, people are saying decolonize this, decolonize that, it's meaningless, what are you talking about? And I think this is an important issue of why, why this is, has contemporary relevance, and I'd like to flag that as something that I would um, love to discuss later if there's time when we go into the open discussion part. Um, ways to think about these, and like what you were saying too, I think that's been really important to me, is this ability to recognize without trying to co-opt, without trying to name and claim. It really helpful, and it helped me focus a lot of conversations that I've been having with the work that I've been doing, the people I've been working with about focusing on how the way that well-meaning anarchists often wipe and not always reproduce their own hierarchies that they bring into the space not even aware of it, and how you can create a, an anarchism that is decolonizing, but also decolonizing the anarchism. And really, you connected that in a really, I think, a really awesome way. And what I liked about it so much is that it's, it's uh, it's connected to so many bigger ideas and it just expands. It's like a book I can give to somebody and they can read, and then like it's got a billion ideas in it. And I, I was really impressed, and I'm really glad that you made this book. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just on uh, how we should orientate resistance, so um, should we go into the nations that are being taken over by multinational corporations, or should we stay here and try to communities that resist against us ourselves going into other nations. So it's sort of a which one should we do first? Stay here or if it's you know if it's if it's not possible then we should go there. Yeah, I am really glad that you asked that because I mean does anyone else want to comment on that before I jump in with my thoughts on it? <laughs> yes, go for it. I would say that in general less traveling just, I would say less traveling you know, I always like the rise of the tourist <laughs> is actually something that we have to be really against. In general, like in my own personal life, if I can't talk about anything about about how I want to change the world and how I want to change my life with my mother and with my neighbors and like that old kid I've hated or been friends with since fifth grade, it doesn't make any difference if I go to the other side of the planet. You know, um, the multinational corporations are. They screwed over first world people first and probably, you know, you know, they have there's a huge intensity of like of um, of exploitation that occurs in our daily lives. And like and that relationship, that capitalist relationship is everywhere, even in America, you know. So I would say just take it on wherever you step, you know, wherever you are actually like living. Yeah. Well, to comment on that, um, I think it's important for us to realize our privilege when we live in a first world country and understand that if we go to another country, it should be invited for one to escape that tourist thing. And when you're invited, you have to realize also that what you do have a consequence to everything you do. You can leave and come back to the United States if you want to. Those people have to stay there. They have to live that and they have to go through what whatever the you know the, the state is imposing on them. So I think it's important to go if we are to travel and we have that privilege, 
to go and travel and be humble, understand and see what people's concerns are, learn from them, come back here, and how can we apply it to our own community? That's the most important thing, because you know what's going on in your community better than anybody else. And there are certain things that we can apply from each other and learn and share. And that's the thing with mutual aid is, is sharing. You know, but at the same time, recognizing your privilege, our privileges also, and we have a struggle here, you know, which is just as important. You know, it's equally important. You know, but and when we do have a consequence on a larger scale also. So I think it's important to just know that privilege. And yes, it's good to travel and get that knowledge, but at the same time, we have to come here and show that we can't hide. We, have to, we can't sweep it under the rug. And just, you know. Can you tell us a little bit about your book you published recently? The book that I, that I was talking about tonight? Yes. Yeah, so this book is part of the Institute for Anarchist Studies and AK Press collaboration called Anarchist Interventions. And it's called Decolonizing Anarchism, an Anti-Authoritarian History of India's Liberation Struggle. Uh, since you talk about the India culture, um, are there like punk rock bands there got inspired by the anarchist movement? You know, not that I know of as far as punk rock, they've got like... like Anarcho-punk or anarchist punk movement. Yeah, I think this kind of subculture, the, the subcultures that this kind of politics occurs in are really different there. So it doesn't really match up with like, the people that are doing like rock music aren't necessarily the radical political people. So it doesn't quite, doesn't line up quite in the same way. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Right. Actually, though, in Pakistan, there's like this whole kind of punk rock music called Takwa Core, uh -huh. which is like... They are taking like from the Islamic tradition some pretty radical politics, which are left progressive politics, and like there's some like pretty prominent bands there. Okay, thank you.